Hello, this is Popping Culture Movie Reviews. My guest today is comedian Donovan Shroud. Uh, besides being a comedian, he's the host of the Don't Go Postal podcast. He also, he's also one of the hosts of the DPS podcast. Thank you so much for coming back to uh, Popping Culture. Yeah, of course, man. I'm excited to review Space Jam, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, man. I, uh, this will be us reviewing Space Jam. This will be a 100% spoiler review. But before we spoil the movie, um, I just wanted to ask, why did you choose the movie? And um, would you advise them to watch it? Uh, I would totally advise people to watch it. Get it on DVD, VHS, whatever you got. VHS. And uh, go watch it right now because... Uh, it's one of my like childhood movies. That's why I picked it. It's because like every time I would not go to school, which happened to be a lot, okay, <laughs> uh, I would watch that movie. Like I had it on VHS and I would watch it. So I can go through the entire timeline of this movie. Like we can start with you know Michael just as a kid shooting hoops. His dad's like, all right, it's getting late now. You you gotta wind it down. He's like, all right, shoot till you miss. Okay, and then he just never misses you know he's just like that good as, as a kid and the kid and the father's like man you're, you're pretty good yes yes um i would also advise you guys to watch it now everything past this point is 100 percent spoilers i mean they've had however many years it's like 1996 is i believe it was when it came out you'd be surprised man a lot of people actually haven't seen this movie like i've talked to people that be like they know about it but like they have never actually watched it it's like kind of like doug's first movie like i like the movie but i've met a lot of people that haven't seen it Doug's first movie? Hmm? Who, Doug? Who, what? I'm, I'm, I'm off. You got you lost me. You messing with me? No, like what first movie? Doug. Doug. He was a Nickelodeon character and then later on Disney bought him. Doug. No, nah, man. Skeeter? Nope. Okay. Yeah, this is a cool movie. It's a good show. Like it was a good I'm show. one of those people that I haven't seen it. Exactly. Like, you see how like, yeah. Uh, but that's, a, that's for another time. But Space Jam, man. I'll let you kick it off. Well, yeah, it's just like that opening scene, just the young Michael shooting, and then it just, as soon as he makes that like last shot, it's like an instant cut, and then it cuts to the highlights of like Michael Jordan and his prime, just, and then it's got that music, it's like, come on and slam, and welcome to the jam, and that's like Space Jam, he's jamming it, man, and uh, this is a really cool movie, and uh where, where can we start like how are we just reviewing like how great of a movie it is yeah let's go with that when was the last time you watched it yesterday yesterday yeah i would love to start off since you brought it up the soundtrack is amazing yeah this is like i forgot like how well this how good the soundtrack was like this was on point yeah and like the sad moments in the and it's just like you hear like the sad songs and mm-hmm. then it's back to the like well, come on and slam and it's just a, a a roller coaster that movie. Yeah. And go ahead. Oh uh, no, I was listening. I thought you were about to say something because uh, like there's parts of it where you know he's not doing so well. He's he transitions from basketball, Michael Jordan, and he, that's like the opening scene is just like he's like I'm ready to retire. You know, yep. my father just died, and uh, I'm gonna move on to pursue baseball. And everybody's like, what? What the hell is going on with this? And he's sucking in baseball, and and uh, the kid is like that he has is like better at baseball than him. That was pretty funny. Yeah, I I forgot all about that part until I rewatched it yesterday. I was like, okay, that's right. They did take a lot of real life uh, situations that were going in Michael Jordan's real life, and they transferred it to the movie. Uh, even towards the end, when he goes back to play basketball, because right, <laughs> I was like that. I I don't know how I forgot that. Um, which as a kid, I'm sitting there thinking like, man, he might have actually like spent all this time with Looney Tunes in between. Yeah. Which for those that haven't seen Space Jam and or or actually hopefully you paused it and went and watched it and now you're coming back to to watch the review. He's with the Looney Tunes. Yes. And I didn't like watch cartoons a lot as a kid, so that part like was new to me. But like the live action, uh, you know, it's just like it's like you have Michael Jordan, who's like a person, and then like the cartoon aspect of it. It's like a mixture, and I think it's like one of the best mixtures of like live action, like that, and then like with the cartoons ever in a movie, because so many people have tried to do it and failed. Whereas like Space Jam, they combined it, because like you see Michael get shrunk into the the little uh, golf 
thing. So that's what happens. Is that's how he, he meets the Looney Tunes. Is uh, they're in desperate need of help to face the Monstars in a basketball game for uh, their lives, basically. And they uh, recruit Michael Jordan. They uh, just like suck him through a little uh, hole, a uh, little golf hole after he made a hole in one because yeah. they had a magnet and we were like pulling it down mm-hmm. remember that yeah they needed the they found out the monsters were coming so they had to get the best basketball player in the world he is the best without a doubt you know forget lebron james i'm gonna i'm going i'm going to open the can while we're talking about it. are you saying michael jordan can act uh i would say as far as basketball players go and the uh, different avenues and ventures that basketball players take. You know, some people box, you know, Nate Robinson. Didn't work out that well for him. You know, and then, like, people, some basketball players, they go and act. I would say as far as, like, secondary ventures go, Michael did great on that one thing because he he did that one role. I'm pretty sure that was it. Like, he might have done some commercials or... He did a lot of commercials. This movie, if uh, when the last time you seen it? Oh, probably like four weeks ago. Did would you agree that this movie felt like a big commercial for Looney and Tunes? For everything, if you like, after looking at it yesterday, I didn't realize they plugged so many things. Like they bring up so many different franchises, like yeah. throughout the movie. The big guy, that's the manager. He walks in. He's like, "You want this Whopper? You yeah, know, this, uh, or whatever. It's like a quarter pounder with cheese. Yeah, like, it's like man, like everything that like I don't know how many sponsors they had. Like put my name, put my brand in the movie. But like every time they brought it up, it was like that product is something that they sell. And I was like, man, this is all through the movie. I, I think that was just the 90s, really, because a lot of the movies in the 90s were like that. Like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is a cigarette ad, the whole thing. I can see that, yeah. Um, when when you thought about the Looney Tunes in there, did you feel like they gave them any good character development? Character development? Uh, yeah, I mean, Bugs Bunny went from a, a coward to a hero. In what way? Uh, I mean, like, I, I, at the end, you know, he gets Lola. So at the, at the end, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, he's, he's that hero getting Lola Bunny. He's, he's succeeded, you know, so there's character development with that. Uh, I don't really, uh, I hadn't really thought about that as far as, like, the cartoon characters' char- yeah. character development. Yeah. And Michael, I mean, he goes through, just like I said, like a roller coaster of, like, He's the best in basketball. I just won a championship. And he's like, I'm out. I'm going to play baseball. And then he hits that low of like, I suck at baseball. And then disappears off the face of the earth. Because once he's with the Looney Tunes, he's on the ground. Nobody knows where he's at. And it's just this big circle of just like getting back to where he needed to be, which was kicking ass in some basketball, man. Yeah. Uh, when it came to Lola, um, guys, if there's any fans watching that um, are fans of furries, uh, I think she was in the movie just for that. Uh, Lola can get it for sure. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. All right. We're going this angle. Uh, what? As an adult looking back, I uh, I was like, I don't think they had to sexualize Looney Tunes. I was just like, uh, all right. Well, I, hadn't, I didn't even think of it as – as that when I was when I was a kid because I was a kid yeah. but uh, looking back on it and you know or watching it with adult eyes uh, I think because they made her for the movie this isn't she's not like a like there's no Lola before Space Jam there's no Lola before Space like she was just for the movie yeah I did not know that I thought she was a part of the Looney Tunes Mm-mm. are you shitting me definitely yeah. You're pulling my, you're pulling my leg. I, but I don't know why we do about this topic, but uh, really, definitely. I, I see that goes to show just like how much not of a fan of Looney Tunes I was until the movie. It's not like I watched the movie and then started watching Looney Tunes by any means, but like, oh no, they didn't get Looney Tunes breast to Lola. Well, that explains a lot, sir. Uh, <laughs> no, it, yes, yeah, I do remember just like that one scene where she's like, "Don't call me doll." Talking to the monster, because you're, 
Yeah, yeah. Some monster called her doll, and she's like, "Don't call me doll." Or no, that was Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck called her doll. Yeah, I saw his name. Yeah. When you look at the animation, I think that was amazing for the time. Yeah, exactly. Because all the stuff they did with Michael, like stretching his arm in that one scene where he's mm-hmm. dunking to score the winning goal, and getting shrunk through the hole, flattening out that big guy. Uh, and him like getting pumped up with an air uh, yeah. tire. What's it called? I don't know. Uh, what is that shit called? It's a, a tire, tire pump. I believe. Tire pump. Thank yeah. you. So I can't think of the simplest things. No, it's, totally, it's totally fine. Uh, did you remember that Bill Murray was in the movie? Oh yeah, I didn't know who Bill Murray was when I was a kid. Okay. But yeah, like watching over, I'm just like, oh, it's, it's Bill Murray, like Groundhog Day. Yeah, I totally forgot Bill Murray was a movie. When I saw, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's right." Yeah, like yeah, like, and Larry Bird and all these other oh yeah great basketball players that had to get some acting chops in. Oh yeah, when Michael calls, I'm pretty sure they was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." As long as you come back to play basketball, I'm like, "Yeah." I wonder like if they got that call from Michael and he's like, "Hey, I'm, I'm rounding up a team," and they're like all getting excited, like, "Oh, what are we about to play? Who are we about to play against?" And then he's like, "No, nah, like I need you for this movie role." I'm like shit, I don't. <laughs> it's like the basketball Ocean Elevens, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley. I, I think he's hilarious, man. He says a bunch of <laughs> stupid shit on Inside the NBA right yeah. now, but uh, I still find him hilarious. Yeah, he's just like me. I say stupid shit all the time. Yeah, and I'm seven foot tall. Exactly, exactly, and and black. Let's go. <laughs> just, I don't know. That's uh, the the ego boost I need there. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how do you feel like this movie was paced? Do you like the pacing in it? What does pace mean? Uh, do you ever feel like the movie slowed down? Or you were like, okay. No, uh, uh, I think it's paced perfectly, man. Like, it's got beginning, middle, end. And it just flows seamlessly. I would say the beginning is like that part of him retiring from baseball. and or I mean, retiring and then going to baseball. Yeah. And getting recruited by the Looney Tunes. That's like the end of the beginning is when he starts with the Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. And then once he's with the Looney Tunes, it's like that middle section of just like turning these just complete fools into a basketball team. Like he's literally got to work with everyone you would pick last on your basketball team. He's like, I'm going to carry them. He's he's, he's picking us. Right. He's basically got like Allen Iverson's 2001 Philadelphia Sixers team. No, I think it's worse. I think he's like picking us right now. Like, hey, let's get the guy. Let's get those two guys. The guys on the podcast. That's that's how bad I think it Picking is. Picking yeah. And having the, I think his name was Stan, the big yeah. guy. Having him is just this is the worst. Like, he, he thought that Stan would be worse at basketball uh, than all of the Looney Tunes. Like, they're in that last, and that's that's the ending of it. It's just like getting towards that, like, last final basketball match against these these people from another planet that are playing in this game so that they can enslave Michael Jordan yeah. uh, to have him as a amusement park uh, attraction because like their whole planet is an amusement park and you know that's the end of it what did I say before that shit I was going somewhere with that I can't remember what were they drinking that was supposed to help them what was in that drink H2O. That's right. I remember that as a kid. It's like, man, I don't drink enough water. Yeah. I thought that was, uh, as an adult, I was like, oh, that's good. That was a good sign for the kids. Like, that was that was, that was was clever. Yeah. I mean, you got to give the right messages. It's, it's not all about Lola Bunny's uh, assets. Yeah, and it's not about, we got to make sure we buy Whoppers. And... Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's definitely the double side of that it's just like you're you're telling them about these these horrible burgers and and one and then like drink your water i guess this is a balancing act as yeah. well <laughs> yeah it's like we gotta make this money like like, like we got michael for a reason we're and here I, I, another reason why i picked the movie is because like we talked about it in our first episode yep. and and we talked about i did mention on don't go postal that we were gonna review uh indian in the cupboard we'll have to do that another time oh maybe. definitely definitely uh, since I said that, but like, I know that we had mentioned it in the first episode of Pop and Culture because like I was I was talking about how it had COVID in it. 
Yep. Because these monsters from another planet, they're trying to get uh, power so that they can be really good at basketball. And they have a way of taking the talent out of Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, all these people. Uh, was it Muggsy Bugs, the other guy? I want to say yes. Muggsy Bugs is the small guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They took the talent out of them. And because of that, they shut down the entire Staples Center. Like, and people were wearing gas masks and shit. I'm like, that's COVID. That's, that's, how, that's how we started the podcast, guys. COVID jokes. Uh, <laughs> but right. it made sense. It made total sense at that time because it was like, yeah. That's really how it worked. How did you like the animation for the monsters? The animation? I mean, it's like I said, it's just like, it seemed like it was just a part of like that live act, like live thing. Like they were standing beside Michael and it, it looks fine. Yes, I agree. And to pull something like that off in the 90s. Yeah. I think it was really smart for them to make like, because it, it was a different animation from the Looney Tones, if you notice. It was just like, these are like monster monsters. Like, like some like I would say cereal box monsters looking fellas, so yeah. But I thought that was clever than just sticking with the same um, style of animation that the Looney Tunes were used to. Um, one through ten, what would you give this movie? Eleven. <laughs> okay. I I fully recommend it. Okay. All right. This, this, uh, that's more nostalgic and just like loving the movie. If I had to detach completely from it and say, like, just as an overall enjoyable movie, I would say 11 because it's also, it's really enjoyable. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so, okay, it's my turn. Um, <laughs> it's not important what I'm going to rate it. What uh, would you rate it? Seriously. Nah, give not, me, no, don't no, hurt my, like, hurt uh, my feelings if you need to. Tell uh, me what. No, uh, not five. And, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> if you got kids, definitely let your kids watch it. Uh, do you believe that this movie has become a part of pop culture? Space Jam, of course, because LeBron wouldn't be trying to recreate it if it wasn't. Or the studio, I guess. I don't know. Uh. I think he was just like, all right, I'm going to put together a team of directors and writers and try and be as good as LeBron in every aspect of life, including acting. I mean, you've seen him in movies. I can act. LeBron can't act. I can say that. I've seen LeBron in movies? Yeah, he's been in like three movies. What has he been in? If you if you had an ex, I could have told you, but yeah, I've seen I've seen him act. Like he, I think he's better than Blake Griffin, and Blake Griffin can actually act pretty well. You think LeBron acts better than Blake Griffin? I would say yeah. Oh, they tied. They My act better than Michael goodness. Jordan. We know that the best basketball actor of all time is Shaq, and there's no there's no doubt about it. All right, man. Thank you for having on. <laughs> I did, like, like I said, I did like Shaq. And that Hubie. concludes the movie review. <laughs> like I said, I did like Shaq and Hubie Halloween though. Yeah, I mean. That was surprising to see him. Yeah, like it was definitely a cameo. Where it was like, oh, okay, he got Adam Sandler's got even more friends now. Um, but let's jump back into Space Jam, man. Let's just finish this movie review out, okay, man. So, let's let's, uh, let's yeah. get to the nitty gritty. All and right. the nitty gritty of Space Jam is just like the overall message. And the overall message, I think, is of optimism. It's saying you can defeat all odds because that halftime of the, the last basketball match when Michael's with the Looney Tunes and they're losing bad at halftime and he gives that speech is just like so motivational. Side note, before the basketball game, they see the big crowd of people mm-hmm. just like going to this Looney Tunes yep. uh, basketball arena and it's like nothing but Looney Tunes characters. <laughs> that shit was awesome. Like that that scene, just like seeing people in cars, just yeah. like lining up to get there, that was cool. You know, that took at least a couple, at least two months just to do that in general, to like animate all that. Yeah, I have no idea uh, about that uh, or any of the inner workings of animation. Okay, I was just I was just guessing. Like you could tell they were passionate about this. So. I know that it takes me like a week to make a comedy flyer, so I don't doubt it. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, that was a great scene just to see them. And then the announcements when they announced them out, that was cool to see the audience there too. Yeah. Just that, that last part, like I said, like that, the beginning, middle, end. And then like that end is that start of like, as soon as you see people lining up to go to this basketball game, that's the, the end of the movie. Because like, it's a solid like 20, 30 minutes yep. uh, once it like starts with the basketball game about to start. Yep. And 
it's just so much packed into that one thing. Like, like I said, like there's nothing but uh, cartoon characters in the crowd, and there's that one bull in the crowd, and and what's his face uh, puts red paint all over one of the Bond stars, and the bulls are laughing, ha ah, ha, and he sees his red, and he's like ah, and then charges him. Like that was just there's just so many funny moments in it, and the the little. Uh, what's it called being smushed the little bird yeah like they destroyed them in the first half it did it was, was there any moment in this movie where you actually laughed out loud oh yeah okay i, I laugh out loud i guess like when i rewatch it uh as an adult i laugh out loud because like for one i think it's i think it's just funny and two like this is that nostalgia aspect of like ah i remember that yeah. Because like I said, like I I watched Space Jam literally every time I called out or uh, not called out, but every didn't time I, I didn't show up to that no say call out from now on. But I called out from school. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I ain't coming today. <laughs> Send me my homework. Uh, no. But yeah, I I agree. And that ending shot where you see him like get back into the NBA, if it, it, it was real life because he really did join get back into the NBA. Right. So uh, that was cool. Plus, it was awesome just to read, to hear the backstory. Like they shot this movie, uh, I believe, the same time they went to the Olympics. Oh yeah, around that same time, yeah. So, a different country to do the Olympics. They might have had actual Looney Tunes for him to practice with. <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> that'd be hilarious. You should see a cardboard cutout. Like, why is that there? Don't worry about it. Right. But overall, great movie. Highly recommend Space Jam. Yes. He has, he said, great. They had a great message. Also, the message in the movie: drink water, eat whoppers. Uh, where can they follow you? Uh, don't uh, don't go postal podcast. Just listen to that and social media, Instagram, Donovan Shroud Comedy. Well, uh, like I say, guys, uh, great comedian. Make sure you check him out. Uh, thank you again for coming on the movie review, and you guys have an amazing day. <laughs>